Hi friend, I am Rajdi Bajaria. Welcome to my channel. Today I am going to teach you the principle of dark field microscope. So the first thing that we need to know that why it is called as dark field microscope because suppose this is actually a glass slide. Okay friend, this is actually a glass slide and in this glass slide sample present. Sample present. Okay friend. So when light will pass through this glass light, the field or the background on which the sample is actually present, this field or this background will appear in dark color. And the sample which is present on this field or this background in this glass light, this sample will appear in bright color. This is why it is called as dark field microscope or dark field microscopy. So clear friend? Now we will talk about the component which are actually present in dark field microscope. So the components are actually it is eyepiece, then objective lens, then sample stage, then condenser lens, and then opaque disc or angular diaphragm and then light source. So these are actually the important component or instrumentation part of a dark field microscope. Now we will talk about the principal theory through which the dark field microscope actually work. So basically this is the light source. You can see that the light rays are coming from the light source. So in the first step the light rays will come from the light source. The second step, you can see this image here. This is light source. This, this is actually opaque disc called the or annular diaphragm. This is actually the condenser lens. This is the condenser lens. So look this image here. This is the light source. Light rays are coming from the light source. And then the opaque disc called annular diaphragm comes. The primary work or the principal work or the work of opaque disc called annular diaphragm is that it will prevent the light rays, it will prevent the light rays to enter in the center part, in the center part of condenser lens. So basically you can see this light rays, this light ray is actually coming from the light source and it is prevented by the opaque disc and and this light ray this light ray is not able to capture by the center part of condenser lens and one more thing that you can see here is that the opaque disc has slits or pores so these are actually the slits through which the light rays which are coming from the light source, those light rays, one thing you have to remember that is those light rays which are actually passing through the slits of opaque disc are able to capture the condenser lens. But those light rays will be captured in the periphery part of condenser lens. That means those light rays will not be captured in the center part because the center part is actually blocked by the opaque disc. This is the opaque disc which prevents these light rays which are actually going to the center part of condenser lens. But opaque disc also has some slits. So those light rays which are passing the slits of opaque disc are captured by the condenser lens but these light rays are actually captured in the periphery part in the periphery part of those condenser lens so now i think this portion clear now the condenser lens will focus the light rays to the sample so this is actually this is actually the sample this is the glass slide so the condenser lens will, will focus the light rays to the sample. Then in the next step, we know that two types of reflection occur, non-diffracted reflection and diffracted reflection. So 
those light rays which actually appearing from the sample these light these light rays are appearing from the sample and they are actually captured by the objective lens so you, you can see that these light rays are actually coming from the sample and these light rays are actually captured by the objective lens this type of this type of reflection is called as diffracted light ray or diffraction you can say diffraction so this type of light rays are called as diffracted light ray and those light rays those light rays which are actually coming from the sample but are not captured by the condenser lens you can see that this light ray is going to this direction and this light ray going to this direction so they will not be able to capture by the objective lens this type of reflection is called as non diffraction or this type of light rays are called as non diffracted light rays okay friend then those diffracted light rays which are actually captured by the objective lens this light rays will be captured by the eyepiece and the image will form of this sample and the image will form in a manner that the background will appear in dark color or the field will appear in the dark color and the sample which is present on this field or on this background of in this glass the sample will appear in bright color so this is actually the basic principle of dark field microscopy so thank you friend for watching this lecture and the question that come from this actually from this topic is that write down the principle of dark field microscopy or name the component of dark field microscopy so one thing that we notice that in bright field microscopy the opaque disc or annular diaphragm is actually absent but in dark field microscopy the opaque disc is actually present and one more important thing that is actually you don't need to stain the sample this is the important thing that you don't need to stain this sample so in dark in bright field microscope we have to stain this sample but in case of dark field microscopy we don't need to stain this sample this is the advantage of dark field microscopy thank you so much friend for watching this lecture till the end subscribe this channel and also like this lecture